Good morning, Harvest Kids, and welcome back to another Harvest Kids Web Church episode. I'm your host, Curtis, and I'm here with... Elijah. And we're so happy you could be here for another episode. Today is the beginning of a holiday that we know very well. Can you show them this? And let's give them a hint. Do you know what today is? Well, if you couldn't tell from this, this is a palm branch. That means it's Palm Sunday. Yeah. Palm Sunday. What, do you know what holiday comes right after Palm Sunday? Easter? That's right. The Easter holiday is coming up next week. I'm so excited. How about you? I am too. Yeah? Last year, what did you do for Easter? Um... I forgot. You forgot? Remember we had a scavenger hunt? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had a scavenger hunt. We found all types of goodies and candy, and we had a great time for Easter. And we hope you guys have a great time for Easter coming up next week. Well, we're going to go ahead and kick off our lesson today by worshiping the Lord to some music. Let's get into our song right now. Well, like I said in the intro, today is Palm Sunday, and that's exactly what our lesson is about, Palm St Sunday and the reason why we call it Palm Sunday. And I think the best way to explain why we call it Palm Sunday is to watch this video I found. I think it's a great representation of why we call it Palm Sunday. This story is about Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem. So let's take a look at our video and see what happens. The story of Easter, the triumphal entry. This is Jesus, hey who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love and healed people from their sickness. He did many miracles like calming storms and even raised people from the dead. Wahoo! At this time, the Jewish people were celebrating a festival called Passover that had been celebrated since the time of Moses, when God brought his people out of Egypt. 
So Jesus was going to Jerusalem to celebrate. Jesus and his disciples stopped in the town. You coming? And Jesus told two of his disciples to go on ahead of them. Eh, okay. He told them to go into a village and that they would see a young donkey that no one had ever ridden. Rock! He told them to untie it and bring it to him. If anyone asks, what are you doing? He told them to just say, the Lord needs it and we'll return it soon. Okay, go ahead. So the disciples did what Jesus said and brought him the donkey. A long time ago, before Jesus was even born, God had said that the Savior, the King of Israel, would come to Israel in this way. And now Jesus was doing just as God had said. The news that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem swept through the city. Many heard about all the amazing things he had done, so they cut palm branches and ran to see him. Huh? The Pharisees and religious rulers realized that there was nothing they could do, for everyone was going to see Jesus. Jesus rode into the city of Jerusalem and the crowd spread their coats on the road ahead of him. His followers began to shout and sing as they walked along, praising God for all the wonderful miracles they had seen. The Pharisees were upset. Hey, Jesus! And they told Jesus to stop the people from saying things like that. But Jesus said, if they keep quiet, the stones along the road would burst into cheers. So the people kept on singing, Blessings on the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Praise God in highest heaven. The entire city of Jerusalem was in an uproar as he entered, asking, Who is this? And the crowds replied, It's Jesus. And Jesus rode the donkey through the street of Jerusalem to the temple in a triumphal entry just as God said he would many years before. So now that our video is over, does Palm Sunday's meaning make sense? Well, if it doesn't, let me read something from the Bible to you, and maybe that'll help a little bit more. So let's read together. So the passage I want to read to you today is from Mark 11, verses 8 through 10. Just like in the video, this is what was said and done as Jesus came to Jerusalem. Many people spread their coats on the road. Others spread palm branches that they had cut in the fields. Those in front and those in the back shouted, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. So does that make more sense now? See, the people spread palm branches on the ground as Jesus arrived in Jerusalem. It's what he walked over with while he was riding the donkey. And they shouted Hosanna. That's exactly why we did that worship song today. It all fits in today's lesson, which is Palm Sunday. Well, next week will be Easter. And like I mentioned to you before, we'll be having a special service in the church the day of Easter. I hope you all will come out and enjoy the lesson that I have for you all. We'll do some crafts and some games and we'll have a great time. I'd love to see you there and I hope you show up. Of course, of course, of course, I've got a game for you all. Let's go, it's game time. Oh, hi friends. <laughs> uh, I don't know about you, but I am excited about Easter. <laughs> I love celebrating the empty tomb, but you know what shouldn't be empty on Easter morning? An Easter egg! So, <laughs> today we're gonna play a game where you have to try to identify empty Easter eggs from an egg that is full of sweet, oh, delicious, wonderful candy. <clears throat> the rules are simple. I'll give you the name of a Bible character from the Easter story. Then I'll show you three Easter eggs with facts about that Bible character. Two of these facts will be wrong, but one will be true. The egg 
with the true answer has the candy! Uh, all you have to do is hold up the number of fingers for the egg you think has the right answer. One, two, or three. So, who's ready to go hunt for Easter eggs? Me too! Let's go! Our first Bible character is Peter. Now, which of these is true about Peter? One. Peter betrayed Jesus for money. 2. Peter denied knowing Jesus. 3. Peter washed the disciples' feet. Remember, hold up one, two, or three fingers based on which egg you think is telling the truth. Ooh, so it's not egg number one. Okay, time's up. Who is holding up two fingers? You're correct. Peter did deny that he knew Jesus three times. Ooh, you found the candy. Well done. Let's try another. Our next Bible character is Pilate. Which of these is true about Pilate? One, Pilate set Barabbas free. Two, Pilate flew planes. Three, Pilate was the chief priest. All right, which egg do you think is telling the truth? So, Pilate's not a pilot. Okay, time's up. How many fingers are you holding up? You should be holding up just one because Pilate did set Barabbas free. Nice job. I'm ready to try another one. Our Bible character for this round is Judas Iscariot. Which egg is telling the truth about Judas? One, Judas betrayed Jesus for money. Two, Judas was a tax collector. Three, Judas prayed with Jesus in the garden. So, which egg do you think is telling the truth? Okay, one or three. That's it, time is up. Who is holding up three fingers? Ah, oh, you should be holding up just one. Judas Iscariot did betray Jesus for 30 silver coins. Let's try another. Ah, looks like our next Bible character is Simon from Cyrene. Now, which of these is true about Simon? One, Simon was Jesus' brother. Two, Simon invented Simon Says. Three, Simon carried Jesus' cross. So, which egg is telling the truth? Okay, so not a game maker. Time is up! Did you figure it out? It's egg number three! Well done! Simon did have to carry Jesus' cross. Let's try another. Our next Bible character is Mary Magdalene. Which egg is telling the truth about Mary? One, Mary was Jesus' sister. Two, Mary was the first person to see Jesus on Easter. Three, Mary never met Jesus. What do you think? One, two, or three? Huh, so she did know Jesus. Time's up. Are you holding up two fingers? If so, you're correct. Mary Magdalene was the first person to see Jesus on Easter morning. Nice job. Let's try one more. Our final Bible character is Thomas. Which egg do you think is telling the truth about Thomas? One. Thomas doubted Jesus was alive. Two. Thomas was a Roman soldier. Three. Thomas isn't in the Bible. What do you think? One, two, or three? So, 
Oh, Thomas wasn't a soldier. Time's up! Are you holding up three fingers? If so, you should be holding up just one. Thomas was a disciple and he did doubt that Jesus had really risen from the dead until he saw him with his own eyes. Excellent work, everybody! You found all of the candy eggs. Happy Easter! I'm sorry to say that this is the end, but it was a great message and I had a great time hanging out with you all. And I would love to do it again next Sunday in the church. Can you believe that? It'll be the first time in an entire year that we've actually had a children's message in the church. I hope to see you there this next coming Sunday. Oh, that's right. Don't forget, Saturday, the egg extravaganza is going to be held at the church parking lot from 11 to 1 o'clock. Come on down, get some goodies, some candy, and just enjoy being out and seeing all the wonderful Easter decorations. It's going to be a blast, and I hope to see you all there. Oh, but I can't let you go yet because I always have to pray for you all before I let you go. Let's pray. Dear Father, I pray that you bless all the children who are watching this message today, Lord. Father, help them have a great Easter season and help them remember the real true meaning of Easter in, in the message that you gave us of your son Jesus, Lord. Please help them to remember that you are always there to guide them and help them through any troubles that they have in life, Lord, and they can always look to you for anything that they need, Father. Please go with them throughout the rest of the week and the holiday blessing them and giving them hope in any way that they need it, Lord. Jesus, in your name, we pray. Amen. All right, everyone. I'll see you next week at the church for our Easter message. Bye.